huh. that would then become activated. The other nice. way is to take um, um, a whole food like a mushroom that has vitamin D inside of it, and you take enough to equal 10,000 international units. So you can get it both ways. What are the best uh, mushrooms to uh, ingest? Well, uh, all mushrooms make vitamin D, or, but each one is different, like we're different. You can fingerprint mushrooms. So you, some mushrooms, if, they, if they're in the sunlight, will produce more vitamin D than others. We've made a discovery uh, working at Pennsylvania State University with Dr. Robert Thielman in the Department of Food Science that if you take mushrooms or mushroom powders and you expose it to one spectrum of the UV light, 350 nanometers, you will exponentially uh, magnify the amount of vitamin D. For example, one second of a mushroom called king oyster from Japan, you can increase vitamin D by 1,000% in one second. That's huge. I know. It's unbelievable. We think that that occurs because the mushroom is protecting itself. It's an immunologic reaction. The mushroom lives in the ground. It doesn't want to come out, but it has to come out to procreate, right? It has to throw its spores all over the place. Right. And it, then suddenly you have sunshine in the UV spectrum. Uh, so the logical conclusion is that the mushroom is producing massive amounts of vitamin D as an immune protector. And we see that in the human, too, because when you give vitamin D, your immune system functions better. And, isn't it, uh, isn't it amazing how these plants are, are, are almost intelligent? I guess they are. Uh, yes, they are, for sure. <laughs> They've been here a lot longer than we have. Yeah, they, they know how to survive, don't they? Yes, they do. Swine flu, you talk about the, the possibilities that it could be a vitamin D deficiency. I, I think this is not could be anymore. I think there's a lot of evidence about the role of vitamin D in your immune system. Uh, you know, we're, we're exposed to viruses all the time. We're exposed to AIDS viruses all the time. Uh, some of us get it and some of us don't. And why we don't get it is because our nutritional levels is higher than the people who do get infected with these viruses. Uh, again, I come back to the Canadian government, so we're not talking about just a fly-by-night organization. Uh, last January, when we were at the peak of our, or December, the peak of the flu season, the Canadian government put out a directive to study vitamin D levels in people in Canada with, with swine flu. And uh, we now find that those people who have lower levels of vitamin D have increased susceptibility to flu-like symptoms. Why did the World Health Organization scare the heck out of everybody calling this a pandemic, the swine flu, H1N1? And it basically fizzled out worldwide, thank oh. God. But why, why did they do that? Well, I used to call it the CNN flu. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't take a flu shot this year. I, I never took did. my mushrooms. I, 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 I feel the best I've ever felt. We did a study in 100, because all the things I'm going to tell you are data-driven. We don't just have hearsay. I mean, uh, my name is an MD, and, and I want to tell the world that what we do, we do with research, and we do whole food research. So we did a study in about approximately 100 people, an open clinical study in the United States, 50 women and 50 men, and none of them got the swine flu. We did it for a year, and very few of them got any flu, and in general, they felt better throughout the flu season. So we think that nutrition plays a very important role. And one of the side effects that we had in the study was that the, the women were calling us up and say our hair growth was up 30%, our nail growth was up 20%. And we started thinking about it. We say, here are people who are nutritionally stable, supposedly, and they live good lives. How can you give them a mushroom whole food in a combination, various mushrooms, and increase hair growth? The only way is the fact that they needed certain enzymes or, or bionutrients that were found in mushrooms that they didn't consume in their normal diet. That's the only way I can explain it. And I think nutrition is the basis of, of health. That's incredible. That's, that's a great story. I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think the body, once it builds up its immune system, can fight off almost anything. I've always believed, Marvin, that we have cancer cells, all of us, in our systems right now. It's just that when our bodies immune system breaks down, that's when this thing gets us. Well, you have aliens in your body, and I don't mean in terms of uh, from another planet. I call cancer cells aliens. They don't belong of course, there. Of course, and on this show, we might body. have aliens. I'm sorry? 
on this program, we might have real aliens in the body. You never know. <laughs> well, I mean, you have aliens <laughs> migrating throughout the body, and they confuse the body. They fake it out. And what the cancer cell does is causes inflammation, and the body thinks there's a cut there, and so it sends nutrients. It sends blood vessels in to cure the cut, and, and you're really uh, just supporting the growth of the cancer. And so this is where foods come in because they're anti-inflammatories in certain foods, and they could stop that reaction. Back to the mushrooms for just a second. Uh, you know, in some stores you can pick up the dried mushrooms if you're, you're going to use them in, in cooking. Are they any good for you? Absolutely. Uh, there's, we found in our research at Pennsylvania State University that dried mushrooms have the same bioactive potential as the, the whole food mushrooms. And we found that there are certain substances in mushrooms that are heat-stable. One of the most potent antioxidants in the world is a substance I mentioned earlier called ergothionine, and it's totally heat-stable, and your body can't manufacture it. So uh, in the evolution of, of, of nature, uh, the mushroom acquired the ability to have ergothionine. So we must eat mushrooms or take them as a powder. Can you eat a mushroom raw? Yes, you can. I mean, most people don't like to do that. You know, you slice it up and you put it in salads, uh, but you can eat them raw. If you, as long as they're edible mushrooms, they won't hurt you. Now, tell me about the, what's going on in the cure for uh, Alzheimer's disease. And wow. exactly what is this disease? Well, uh, we've made some major breakthroughs there. Some of them we're going to announce in about, we have an ongoing experiment um, uh, in Alzheimer's disease. We, t we took a, at the University of Texas, uh, uh, they made some research breakthroughs on a small organism called the fruit fly. And in fact, two Nobel Prizes were given out for the fruit fly, I think in 1958, for the sequencing of the genome of the fruit fly. So the fruit fly was the first genome sequenced even before the human genome was sequenced. And then subsequently, once you sequence the genome, you could create a Parkinson's fruit fly and an Alzheimer's fruit fly. So we took normal fruit flies uh, and we, we exposed them to paraquat, uh, which is uh, the, uh, similar to Agent Orange. It creates free radicals. It creates oxidative stress, similar to what happens in Alzheimer's disease. And it kills the marijuana plant and the poppy plant by creating free radicals in the plant. The plant dies. It does the same thing in your brain. It does the same thing in people. And when we exposed the fruit fly for the paraquat, they died quickly, you know, dropped dead as flies would do. Sure. But we found that mushrooms that had increased vitamin D inside them, vitamin D2, that we increased biologic survival by 30% in a statistically significant study. And so That's this huge. is the first time that I'm aware in the history of medicine that anyone has uh, increased biologic survival using a whole food. Because of that, we started approximately two months ago an Alzheimer experiment, and we created an Alzheimer fruit fly, Drosophila. And by the way, the, the brain of a fruit fly has 21 to 27 chromosomes that are quite similar to the chromosomes in the brain of a newborn child. So you have a, quite a, a homology there. That's probably so we, why we use the fruit fly in, the, in science class all the time. It, it's probably one of the best biologic models in human research. That and yeah. zebra fish in cancer. The fruit fly, we can make a, a, a fruit fly with juvenile Alzheimer's disease. We can make a fruit fly with Parkinson's disease. We can make a fruit fly with, uh, uh, with uh, as I said, Alzheimer's disease. And so we, we're taking that fruit fly, and we're going to see, and we'll have the results within another 30 to 45 days, and I'd be happy to come back and, and give you the results and see if we can oh, actually... Yeah. Uh, slow down Alzheimer's disease with whole foods. All right, let's 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 talk about some other uh, possibilities here with food deficiencies. And in terms of the specific kind of mushrooms again, because I, I want to hone in on this for just a moment. Y you yes, know, you've we, got shiitake. What, what do you recommend? Okay, um, you have the in the United States, uh, the commercial interest of the United States, and I'm not knocking mushrooms here, but you have the white button, brown button, and portobello. Those are your common mutton mushrooms. They, they are about 90% of what's consumed in the United States. That's where your commercial interests are because that's where they make the biggest profits. Okay. We, we, we're talking about specialty mushrooms. When you mention shiitake, matake, uh, you're talking about exotic specialty mushrooms. And we found when we fingerprint mushrooms, looking at potent antioxidants like polyphenols, beta-glucans, ergo levels, and by the way, organic selenium is made by mushrooms, and organic selenium is involved in prostate cancer. We found that the mushrooms 
that are the exotic specialty ones are the highest in these levels of antioxidants. So we're talking about a mushroom called reishi from China. We're talking about a mushroom from Tibet called cordyceps. We're talking about a mushroom from Taiwan called antrodia. All of these mushrooms are grown under controlled conditions in the United States, and those are the ones we study. And then when we take the fingerprint, we will look and say, okay, if a person has high blood sugar, what mushroom could lower blood sugar? Well, we know that there was a double-blind study in Japan with a mushroom called the Garicus blazii. So we looked at that mushroom and we looked at the study, and people with diabetes were lowering their insulin dosage when they took a Garicus blazii. And it was statistically significant. So if we want to control blood sugar, we would put a Garicus blazii in, in the powder, in the pill. So that's a mushroom I haven't even heard of. How come we're not told these things? Well, uh, you know, when you're trained in nutrition uh, in medical school, you learn only the word nutrition. You don't really study nutrition. So most physicians in the Western world, uh, you know, we're put into a box as a physician, and we never think outside the box. Well, the ancient wisdom of China and Japan has been out there for thousands of years. I think what we're doing now is we're applying Western medical technology, which is excellent. We have biomarkers. We have some of the best diagnostic equipment in the world, and we're using that with the ancient wisdom of China. So we're taking the best machinery that we have in medicine, and we're studying mushrooms from all over the world. Let's talk a little bit about diabetes and what this is. Lots of people walking around right now, a doctor, uh, with uh, diabetes 2 or even pre-diabetes. They don't even know it, do they? No, it, 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 it's, a, it's a terrible tragedy. Diabetes will probably overtake cancer and be the worst uh, epidemic in the world in, in medicine and probably economically will be most devastating. Um, we, we, we can estimate that there are approximately 31 million people who are diabetic in the U.S., and there are approximately an additional 61 or 62 million who are pre-diabetic. That means one out of every four in our population has diabetes or will develop diabetes. And we now know, I'm going to use the word alien again, but I talk about alien fat cells. That means just like cancer cells migrate throughout your body, fat cells migrate throughout your body. And so that's why we think of metabolic syndrome and we say diabetes. Obesity and diabetes are almost synonymous because when you're overweight, you have so many fat cells and they migrate. And when they go to the liver, they cause an immune reaction. And when your body goes to kill these fat cells with killer cells called macrophages, you create an immune reaction that leads to diabetes and insulin resistance. And there's no question about it. So we need to control insulin resistance. And we find that mushrooms have the ability to increase insulin sensitivity. So we've done studies, as I mentioned, they did one in Japan, we've done it in the United States, where we know that certain mushrooms can increase insulin sensitivity. And when you have diabetes, we can actually show, and doctors are studying this now, uh, the lowering of the need for insulin and oral diabetic drugs when you take certain mushrooms. Let me ask you this in terms of supplements. Would you trust anything coming out of China, or would you look for other sources? I would look for other sources. And the reason being is not that they're not capable of, of manufacturing things, but the, the high level of pollutions, heavy metals, hormones, uh, I mean, there's no way you can stay away from that. I mean, if you take a mushroom or an apple or an orange, and you want to extract vitamin C from the orange, well, the orange grows on a tree, the roots are in the ground, and you have heavy metals in the ground. Well, as, you, as the sun rises, you know those heavy metals are going to be in the orange. That's a good point. Well, you, you stay with us. We're going to come back in just a moment and uh, talk again for another hour about some of these incredible breakthroughs here. Uh, also, some tips on tanning salons. Can they help you? And then later on, we'll take some. 